hello and welcome to, believe it or not, we're already on lesson seven of our series called To Be Like Jesus. Now, for those of us who want to be like Jesus, and I know that there's probably some people watching this who don't know if they love Jesus or they want to be like him or um, haven't really thought that through. And, you know, I understand that. And it's okay. I still want you to listen. It's This is probably more important to you than than any of us. So listen, and we're going to just look at what Jesus is like and what he has done and how we can respond to that in being like him. We all want to be like somebody. Um, and I think if we really know who Jesus is, we will want to be like him as well. And hopefully as you grow as a person, he will ultimately become the most important person you want to be like. So let's open with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for um, not just things to learn and to teach, but that you've given them to us in the Bible. And we want to just look at that right now for the next couple minutes and just um, learn from you. So help us to do that. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, in many ways, Jesus was not like you and me. He always obeyed his earthly parents. Always. He never disobeyed them. That's, now, that's amazing to think about. Um, but more importantly, he always obeyed his heavenly Father, the Father that sent him to the earth. And he did it not just when it was easy, I mean, it's easy to obey your parents when, um, excuse me, it's always, it's, it's easy to obey your parents when they say, well, finish your dessert, but maybe not as easy when they say, finish your vegetables. So when it's hard to do, when, they, when you're given hard things to do, it's hard to obey those. And Jesus did that all the time. He obeyed even the most difficult things. And in this video, you and I are going to look at um, one of the things that Jesus did that was super hard, and yet he calls us to do it too. So if we're going to be like Jesus, we need to do the thing that he's teaching us to do today. But first, we're going to run a fun little test, just a little test, a thinking game for you. I'm going to mention two different things, and they're opposites. And I want you to pick one of them, okay? All right, I want you, what would you pick if you had to pick between spending the entire day at your favorite park, Disneyland, or spending the entire day at school? Maybe math class. What would you pick? How about this? Between eating in and out or eating a full bowl of boiled spinach? What would you pick? I know there's probably some sick individual who would pick eating the spinach, but most of you would pick McDonald's or In-N-Out or one of your favorite uh, fast food restaurants. All right, going on vacation. Would you rather go on vacation to Hawaii or Death Valley? Easy answer. Now, here's the one that's going to launch us into our lesson today. Would you rather show love and kindness to your best friend or the class bully? That person who's always mean to you. Who would you rather love? Who would you rather spend time with? Well, we're naturally drawn to things and people that we enjoy being around and enjoy doing. We love ourselves more than anything. And so we're going to do whatever makes us the most happy, right? I mean, kids love Halloween because they get a huge bag of candy. But it's not so much fun when your parents say, oh, you can only eat one piece a day, right? But what if you could just eat as much as you wanted every single day? That would make you happy. Uh, we, we love ourselves and we want to just do what we want to do, right? 
Well, the, the choices I gave you really weren't that hard to answer. I mean, who really wants to vacation in Death Valley? Uh, somebody does, but not me. But here's the thing that we need to understand if we're going to follow Jesus. There is nothing natural or easy come by to be a Christian. In fact, being a Christian is very unnatural. If you've ever thought to yourself, it's, it's too hard. Well, I've said that every single day of my Christian life. It requires supernatural power. It, need, it, it requires a superpower, if you want to put it that way. Well, the last lesson, if you watched the last video, we talked about Jesus' command to love our neighbors, right? Love our neighbors. Everyone is our neighbor, the Good Samaritan story. It's popular, it's famous. Jesus used it and wrote it for a good reason. It's a great story. And we're to treat the, the, our neighbors uh, the way that we want to be treated, right? I mean, let's look again at Matthew 5, 46 and 47. Jesus says, For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Don't even the tax collectors do the same? In other words, don't even people you consider horrible people love those who love them? If you only greet your brothers or your friends, the people you love, what are you doing? What more are you doing than others? Don't even the Gentiles, again, people that were hated at the time, don't even the Gentiles do the same? So, I don't have to tell you to love your best friend that thinks you're the greatest person in the world. I don't have to teach you that. Your parents don't have to teach you that. No one has to teach you to love grandma and grandpa who give you nice things and, and uh, just treat you like the princess or prince that you are. I don't have to tell you to love that buddy who has the lifetime pass to Disneyland and can get you in whenever you want. That's normal. Even people who don't love Jesus do those things. And they do good things to those who don't treat them well. Well, to be one of Jesus' followers, we need to go further than that. In Matthew 5, 43 through 45, Jesus also tells his followers and by extension, you and me, if we're following Jesus, he says, You've heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. That was one of the common phrases back then. But I say to you, Jesus says something different. He says, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Uh, persecuting be a, being a big word for those who are mean to you, who treat you badly, who hurt you, who hurt your feelings, who maybe even physically harm you. you got to love and, and pray for those people. It's very, very unnatural. It's, it's normal to want to run away and stay away from those people. Maybe even take revenge and get back at them. Do something to hurt them as well. But this is why Jesus said he was going away. One of the reasons why he went away, the reasons he gave that he went back to heaven was so that he could send another helper. Somebody other than himself. He, he helped his disciples for sure, but he was going to send another helper who could be with them even when Jesus was not physically there. He was going to send the Holy Spirit. And because of the Holy Spirit's help, the believer is able to love his enemies or her enemies just like Jesus did. Here's a story from history which I found very, very interesting. Now, back before you were born probably, there was in Germany a long wall that divided the country in half. There was East Germany and West Germany. And that Berlin Wall separated. It was based in Berlin, the city of Berlin in Germany, and it just ran 
the length of the country, blocking one side off from the other. One side was democracy, like we have here in America, but the other side was communism. And a man named Eric Honecker, I botched that, I'm sure, but Eric Honecker was the dictator of communist Germany. And he and his wife hated God. They, they were atheists. And Honecker made life so hard and miserable for the people of East Germany. Uh, some would say he was not caring for them and helping them and governing them. He was actually harming them. And he was actually viewed on as an enemy of the people because of how he treated them. Well, one of those people, two of those people were a couple, a Christian couple in East Germany named the Holmers. And Ue Holmer was a pastor and was the director of a Christian help center right there in Berlin, the epicenter of the Berlin Wall. Well, he and his wife suffered a whole lot under Honecker's rule in Germany. Here are some examples. The communist leadership of East Germany listened in on all his phone calls. They monitored them, monitored them, and let them know when they were stepping out of line. Every single personal phone call was listened to. Uh, one time when his father died and had a, a funeral, they would not approve his travel so that he could go to the funeral. How sad would that be to have to ask permission from the government to go to a funeral and they said no? Well, also, his mail was monitored. He would get his mail every day and it would be opened and somebody would already have read that. Read that. Eric Honecker, the ruler, his wife, ran the entire educational system of East Germany and it discriminated against Christians. They made special horrible rules towards Christians because they were Christians. And because of that, eight of Pastor Uwe's ten children were not allowed to go to college. They were refused. They were denied the approval to go to college. Well, years passed and eventually an amazing thing happened in history. That wall came crashing down. Well, it was taken down. It was pushed down. The ruler of Ju Germany finally came to their sen senses, and that wall was demolished, partly because of American democracy's influence. Well, the communist way of government went away. And after this, Guess who was the most hated man in Germany? You got it. Eric Honecker, the former ruler of the Communist Party. Even the government, the new government, turned against him. He had no more power, no more control. The new government wouldn't even give him a place to live. In fact, he was so hated that his own family, his daughter, wouldn't let her live with him. And so here were Eric Holner, Honecker and his wife homeless. So Pastor and Ue and his wife, what do you think they did? Well, as I mentioned, they were Christians. and They wanted to be like Jesus. And they saw how Jesus treated his enemies. And likely they went to the very first verse that we read to love their enemies, to bless those who persecute you. And they decided that they would take Eric Honecker and his wife into their very own home. Isn't that an amazing story? It makes me kind of step back and just, whoa, that's amazing. The very ones who had been the enemies of the Holmer family were now being cared for by them. Think how much like Jesus this pastor Yue and his wife behaved like Jesus. 
And why would they do such a thing? Well, because God did the same for us, you and me, for the homers. Listen to Romans 5, 8 through 10. Paul tells us that God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by Jesus' blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through Jesus. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by the life of Jesus, his Son. Pastor Yue and his wife didn't come up with the idea to love their enemies. They just did for the Honakers what Jesus Christ had already done for them. And you and I are no different than Eric Honaker and his wife. As people who sin, we are enemies of God. And yet God is willing to love us. And he desires to love us. And he does love us. And he sent his son to die to take away the wall that separated us between him and us. And when we understand that love that God has shown to us, it makes it a bit easier to love those who hurt us. Now, as you watch TV and movies, you, you listen to music, watch YouTube and flip through all of your social media apps, guess what? You're going to get a completely different message preached to you from the world. You're going to hear, yeah, fight for your rights. Make your enemies pay. Get what you deserve and be proud of it and celebrate those who do the same. Yeah, that's the message you're going to hear. But Christians, those who are following Jesus, we look at things a little bit differently. Well, a lot different, differently. And we find what is acceptable to God right here in his Bible. The Word of God. I mean, if you look anywhere else, you're going to get the opposite and wrong and incorrect and evil, to be honest, message. Where are you going to get the right truth? Where are you going to get the right message? It's only going to come in God's Word. And without it, you're going to fall into a way of living that is no different than the world. Without God's word, you're going to look around, you're going to feel really comfortable and say, yeah, this is the way it's supposed to be. But when we look into God's word, we see that following Jesus is much different than the way of the world. And that's why it's important for those of us who do follow Jesus to study God's word and to live out what it says. Now that closes our lesson today, lesson seven, believe it or not, of to be like Jesus and just maybe go back through some of these passages just to remind you of the ones we read. Matthew 5, 43 through 45 and Romans 5, 8 through 10. And go back through those on your own time and just really think about it and ask yourself questions. Let the Holy Spirit, if he's in you, talk to you and, and teach you and Help you to think about these things and specific examples in your own life where you can follow Jesus and become more like him. It is a, so, a slow process. It's a step-by-step -step process of becoming like him. But with the Holy Spirit and his word, we can get there. We can become more and more like Jesus. Let me pray again for us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these words. We thank you for the truth. What? A hard thing it is to love those who hate us, those who are mean to us. It's radical to love them, but help us to do it. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, until next time, guys, thanks for watching, and have a great day.